Uh, I want to open up today with a little bit of a confession, a little bit of a biograph biographical confession. Um, I, when I was a young kid, really, honest to goodness, believed in magic. Uh, I'm talking about like like witchcraft, uh, wizardry. My the first book that I ever read was Harry Potter when I was 10 years old, and it just I was convinced it was it was doctrine, it was canon to me, and uh, I remember being I can't remember what grade it was, maybe fifth grade before before you turn 11, and it was at the end of the year, and I would say, hey, we'll see you next year, uh, and I'm like, maybe, maybe you will. <laughs> I honestly thought that I was going to get my letter and that I was going to go to Hogwarts, and I was just going to leave my family behind. But I had an internal crisis, because I'm LDS, went to BYU, uh, and I'm like, they drink tea there? Uh, they drink butterbeer? Uh, I, I don't know. Do they have church? They don't mention it once in the books. Does any, is anyone religious in England? I don't know. And so I had this big crisis. Uh, but that wasn't even matched to the time where I stayed up at midnight, my 11th birthday, and no letter came. Uh, I just remember with my watch just there hoping and absolutely nothing came and I was crushed. I mean full on existential crisis for an 11 year old. I started questioning everything. I'm like Santa Claus, he's out. I did the whole like uh, tooth underneath a pillowcase without telling my parents no dollar. Okay, that's out. I'm like maybe I should watch the Godmakers. I don't know. Everything is, uh, everything is up in the air. I'm questioning everything and I just didn't believe in magic uh, until I got really into watching improv. Who in here has seen, uh, whose line is it anyway? Yeah, very good, very good. Uh, I, I just watched these guys, Colin Mockery, Wayne Brady, Ryan Stiles, and I'm just like, they are magicians. They are, they, they are real wor world wizards to be able to just give something very little and create something phenomenal. And that's just what I thought. I'm like, okay, that's what magic is. Fast forward to high school. Um, I was invited to see just the high school troupe perform, and someone said, hey, it's a it's comedy sports high school league. Comedy sports is a, is a worldwide franchise, and they, they teach high schools. I grew up in L.A., and, and they'd come down and taught, and they taught a group there, and they had a lunch uh, a performance to advertise. And I remember seeing them, and I, again, that same, I said, whoa, teenagers can have this magic? And I was completely blown away. I auditioned, and I got in, and that's, when, that's where my, my love story began with improv. And I found that they weren't, wasn't really magic. It was just that improvisers really know when to say yes. And they're really good at saying yes. You could take any two improvisers from the English-speaking world or, or the similar language and put them on stage, and they'll be able to create something that blows your mind because they're really good at saying yes. They have an awesome mindset, which I'm going to get to. I want to talk about ineffective mindsets and the most effective mindsets, which I think improvisers do really well, and something that's helped me out not only in my performance life but in my professional life. I'm going to talk about the, the worst one, which is called the no mindset. This is the contrarian mindset. This is our uh, uh, friends who left the church and are atheists and are like, well, technically, uh, science and all that stuff. They're the people who just say no to everything. Can you, do you know anyone who's like that, who just says no? Who has an experience of like, it just has the no mindset. It's just so cynical. You give them an idea, they see one flaw in it, and it's dead. Someone have an example? You can name names and point. That's really, that's totally appropriate. Right here. Right. Right. Nothing's perfect, and so nothing can be 100% true. Um, these are the people in your group that just that shoot down your ideas. And what sort of conditioning does this do within a group, or when if you need to create a create an idea or be innovative? This is the last type of person you want in your group. This is not the person you're going to be sharing ideas with. The next step up is what we call the yes, but mindset. Uh, uh, in improv, these are the people where you give an idea and they say, yeah, that sounds great, but we're going to go in a different direction. We call these people yes, but heads uh, in improv. Uh, yes, but is really just a no in a tuxedo. It's really, that sounds so wonderful. Thank you for that idea, but we're going to go with my idea instead. 
Does anyone know someone like that, either in the workplace or in your student groups? Again, it's the same thing. It's almost even worse, because it's like, if you're going to say no, just say no. Don't be nice to me. Don't be a yes butthead. And finally, the most effective one is the yes and mindset. And this is uh, uh, the, the pivotal principle that every provides. You take an improv class, this is the first thing you learn on day one, yes and, which means that you validate someone's idea, you accept what they offer, and you add to it. You yes, and then you and. Uh, does someone, does someone have an example of someone who exemplifies in their life the yes and mindset? These are typically the people you want to be around. These are the, the change makers. These are people that are doing things. Someone have an example of a yes and in their life? Right here. Is that effective in the class? Yeah, super awesome. Awesome. I, when I look back in my life and I see what got me to where I am today, I have what I might, what, what I, my might I call a yes map. All of the times I said yes or someone else said yes uh, to get me to where I am today. And I want to go a little bit if I can. I've got a, uh, I'm not that old, but it's, but it's kind of long, so I'll try to compress it as I can. So I, I go back to that moment in high school. Someone said, would you like to go see an improv show? Yeah. I'd like to go. They're holding auditions. Would you like to be in it? Yes, I would. You want to be on the team? Yes, I would. Do you want to perform? Yes. Do you want to practice more? Yes. OK, we're going through. This is now my thing. I've got to get to college. got to think of the next thing. You want to go to college? Yes. You want to get good grades? Yes. You want to study really hard? Yes. OK, I want to go to BYU. I'm going to go to BYU. BYU, will you let me in? No. OK, great. Uh, BYU Idaho will let me in. Yes, fantastic. Okay, go to go there. Start an improv troupe there. Are you going to perform there? Yes. Are you going to study hard? Yes. Are you going to serve a full-time mission? Yes. Serve the mission. Come back home. Are you going to marry your sweetheart from college? Yes. Are you decided to go to law school? Yes. Are you going to study really hard, get straight A's, so you can get to BYU? Yes. BYU will let me in. No. Okay. Uh, are you going to are you going to take the LSAT so that you're able to get in? Yes. Are you going to get a good grade? No. Uh, are you going to try it again? Yes. Are you going to get a good grade? No. Are you going to take that prep course that your, that your coworker offered to get a better grade? Yes. Are you going to quit your job and so you're going to work 60 hours a week to nail this test? Yes. Uh, are you going to take the LSAT and do well? Yes. Are you going to get into BYU? Yes. But it's going to be next year. Perfect. MPA, will you let me in so I can do a joint program? Yes. Will you be in the MPA? Yes. Will you make connections there that are going to be in ways that you never imagined connected back to your improv? Yes. Are you going to try it for comedy sports? Yes. Are you going to work there for two years? Yes. Are you going to find a person who does a, the musical improv, something you want to do when you're 15? Yes. Are you going to open your own small theater uh, in, in Orem? Yes. Are you going to, uh, to hold classes? Yes. Are you going to attract someone, an investor, who wants to give you tens of thousands of dollars to open up your own place? Yes. Are you not going to take the bar anymore so that you can focus comedy full time? Yes. Are you going to stress out your wife immensely? Yes. <laughs> and that is essentially, in a nutshell, where I am today. All the yeses, people that either said yes to me or I decided to say yes. And I know each of you have your own yes map. And of course, there are things that you have to say no. We've been dating for two weeks. Will you marry me? No. That's definitely a no. But I know that there are some things in your life that we could always say yes a little more. Try it. See where the power of yes gets you. And I have one question for you, and I pray that you guys have gotten kind of the pattern what I'm going for now. Uh, but would you like to see some improv in action? Yes. Thanks so much. Well, let's do that again. Yes. Fantastic. Let's welcome up Brady Amundsen, All my right. co-director. All right. Thank you. Uh, you guys probably recognize me from Utah Valley Magazine. I look like Kevin Love. <laughs> one person knows who that is. <laughs> These are creative people, not sports people. That's right. Uh, Kate, we, it's so important in improv that you guys are invested. Uh, this, it's not a passive medium. So we want to get you guys warmed up so that you guys are in it with us. We feed off your energy. Like we say in improv, you guys are the make or break of what we do. Uh, what could happen today is the best thing you've ever seen. We'll call ourselves the kings of comedy, or it'll be absolutely terrible, and we'll call it art, and we'll teach it in public schools. Um, <laughs> So we need to get you guys warmed up. And here's an awesome exercise you can do if you're ever in a group setting. This one, uh, uh, this one best warm-up exercise at a team building convention in Las Vegas. It's a simple game called Countdown. Have you guys do it with us. We're going to raise our hand. We're going to shake our right hand. We're going to count to 10. Then our left hand do the same. Then our right foot, your left foot, and you can do it while sitting down. And then one to nine, and then eight, and then seven, all the way down to one. Y'all ready? 
Okay. Oh, one, one, two, three, two, three four, four, five, six, seven, seven eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 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 One, well, uh, I think we can just say a closing prayer. Yeah, that's it. That's all. Okay, perfect. Uh, check in the mail. Uh, perfect. So what we're going to do is this is going to be a little bit of what we do at professional workshops uh, that we teach mixed in with a little bit of what we do at our, at our theater. So it's going to be informational, uh, educational, and uh, informative. So what we need is we need some audience participation. So we need three people from the audience to come up with us. And uh, I've done enough of these to know that people aren't very likely to volunteer themselves, but they're more than, more than happy to volunteer other people, and I'm totally cool with that. So let's practice that. Uh, who's going to volunteer for our next thing? That guy, that guy, that guy. Okay, you three up. Up, 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 up. I think I'm just going to... Okay. Okay, cool. All right, thank you. What's your name? Ryan. Ryan, thanks so much for coming. What's your name? Philip. Philip. Ryan, Philip, and... Thanks. Okay, let's stagger up a little bit. We're going to play a game called the imitation game. The imitation game is a great way to yes and each other. Let's curve up here. Let's curve up here and let's just have you stagger in between those two. So I'm just going to get close. This, this is exemplifying the example of yes and. What you do when you yes and the person before you to the letter. It's a silly exercise, but it's a lot of fun. Uh, what you're going to do is you're going to turn to Brady and you're going to say something really pedestrian. And you're going to just like what you normally do. You could be like, how are you doing today? Or you're looking great. Whatever you want it to be. Brady then is going to mirror you to the molecule. He's going to look at every single one of how, where your eyebrows are raised, do you tilt your head, and he's going to say the same thing to you. And your job is then to, to, uh, to replicate him by the molecule. Not him, but him. And it'll slowly, and then you'll present it to him, and it'll evolve and evolve and evolve. Make sure that you yes send only the person to your left. So if they mess up, if they laugh, if they giggle, you yes and that and you do it. And we'll, we'll see it turn into something awesome. So whenever you're ready, just say something with a little bit of hand movement and just something pedestrian. You are a tall man. 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 <laughs> you are a tall man. 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 Do it. You gotta match it. You are a tall man. 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 You tall man. You are a tall man. Match it perfectly. You tall man. 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 Perfect. Let's have a round of applause. Thank you all so much. Take a seat. That was excellent. We see what happens when they uh, when they accept. All right, what we're going to need is we're going to need uh, four more volunteers. And go ahead and volunteer somebody else. Four more up. This guy right here, excellent, purple shirt. Let's get let's get uh, three more. Right here, two, three. And let's get one more. One. Let's get a lady. Let's let's, let's volunteer a lady up here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh yeah, you did. Yeah, I think that's true. Come on up. Okay. All right, what we're going to do 
is we're going to have you guys play a game called Marketing Session. Marketing Session works like this. What we're going to do is I'm going to give you a fake product that doesn't exist. You guys are the marketing team for this. That You're just about to pitch it to the CEO, but you really don't know what the product is yet. So what you're going to do is you're each going to take a turn, and it doesn't go in any specific order, and you can do it once or multiple times, but everyone goes at least once. So you step out and you give an idea. You can talk about what's the base demographic, what's the color, who's the spokesperson, what does the jangle look like, what are some of the features of the product. And every time someone offers something, the rest of you need to shout and array like it's the best idea you've ever heard in your entire life. Every single one, even if it's totally stupid. Make sense? Okay, so what I need from you is uh, think of an adjective in your head. Let's say describing word. And if you could think of a noun, person, place, or thing. Okay, tell me your adjective. Smart. And smart ice cream. Okay, we live in the smart generation. So smart ice cream. Whenever you're ready, marketing team, take it away. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, could be, uh, it could be incorporated into an Apple Watch where people can see when their ice cream intake is low. Oh. Yeah. 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 And then how many steps they need to take to burn off the ice cream. Yeah. 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 Burn off that. Yeah. 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 We have to keep in mind the audience. So remember, our primary audience yeah. is male and our secondary male. audience is male. Men need yeah. more ice cream. Yeah. Yeah. Applause. Well done. Thank you so much. Take a seat. For those involved, how did that feel being validated? How'd that feel for the four who came up? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Good. Perfect. You're, I'll go, you're a go-to guy. Uh, <laughs> how, how did you feel about it? How did it feel, even in this simulation? Uh, well, I felt hyped about an idea that was totally ridiculous. Right. Here's the funny thing about your brain. Whether your brain rationally knows that what's going on isn't real, if you receive praise or validation, your pleasure sensors are still activated. Turns out your brain doesn't really care. And sometimes people are like, I don't want to validate that idea because it'll give, a, give them a false hope or I don't, know, I don't know if it's worth it or oh, they're probably going to see right through me. Your brain doesn't care. And just a little bit of a, a, I want you to have a personal anecdote in your mind. I want you, to know, want you to think about two groups of people. Maybe one is your professional group. Maybe the people that you work with at school or your colleagues. And then I want you to think of another group. And maybe they're the same, but probably for most of you it's not. Either your friends or your clique or your group or your crew. Whatever, whatever it's called for you, where you're a different person. I know that I had that. In law school, if you told someone I was a comedian, they would have no, they would not believe you. I was very analytical, I was very serious, and I was just there to think, and I was ready to work. When I'm with my improv crew or I'm with my family, I'm a totally different person. I'm funnier, I'm louder, I give better ideas, I'm funner to be around. And why do you think that is? Your brain can sense a safe place. And if you feel safe, if you know that, hey, I'm going to present something, and if it's stupid, no one's going to care because they got my back. But if you're in a place where you're not safe, then all of a sudden those filters go through. This has to be the perfect idea. This has to be the greatest suggestion. Otherwise, I'm going to look stupid. Does that make sense? Do you agree? What you need to do is you need to create that safe space, and you do that by validation. Like uh, your professor there, that's a great topic. It's not even what we're talking about, but we're going there. What does that condition the classroom to do if a professor makes that the environment? What does that do, do you think? What does that wire the brains of the people in that class? What do you think is going to happen more often? Right. Or more often than like, that's a great idea, but uh, we'll get back to it, okay? Yeah. Or, nope, that's, we'll talk about that later. Whoop. All of a sudden, we're running right here. I've heard that if you're afraid to be wrong, you'll never be wrong again. Right. I love that. Can you say that again? If you're afraid to be. 
right? Our brains are the most complicated, nuanced computers in the known universe. We're able to process 11 trillion bits of information every second from our touch, our sounds, our feelings, our thoughts, all happening at the same time. But throughout our lives, we put in filters from when we were a kid to growing up now where, oh, that's stupid, that's not socially acceptable, that, there's no way that's gonna fly, they're not gonna like that, that's not funny, that's not great. Improv is all about just getting over it. When everyone looks stupid, no one looks stupid. And if everyone accepts that, hey, if, it's, if we fail, that's a great thing. The best thing you do for improv is to fail, uh, which you guys have exemplified perfectly. <laughs> um, wonderful, okay, what we're gonna do now is uh, we need uh, an audience volunteer to come up here and do a scene with us and feel free to, to volunteer somebody else. And then we also need a little bit of a, uh, let's see here, right there in the stripe. We'll have you come on up. And then we need um, two people. We're gonna do a little bit of an object lesson here, just someone who can unlock their phones and give us to us. Who can, who can let us borrow their phones for a second? Okay, right here, wonderful. Make sure it's unlocked. Okay, these two are perfect. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, all right, you take this one. Oh, go ahead and take this one. Phone five. Okay, cool. perfect. What's your name, sir? Michael. Michael, Michael, thank you so much. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to play a game called uh, Pick a Text. I'm going to have you hold this because I don't have a mic speaking to there. Um, we're going to do a scene based off of your suggestion, and uh, I am what's known as the, the straight man, or I'm the, the justifier, and I can say whatever I want, but these two people can only read their lines from, from the text messages. Uh, that is where they get their script. Um, so what I need from you is uh, where's the last place uh, you went on a date? Last place. Good time, perfect. Uh, great, all right, let's go ahead and uh, use that as a suggestion. Wow, sweetheart, this is really awesome. Homegrown food, this is a great pick. Indeed. Yeah, yeah, it really is. Uh, I think we'll go ahead and get the protein plate. What do you want? Not a problem. Uh, glad I was able to find people for you. <laughs> yeah, these people, great service. You're absolutely f phenomenal. You can go ahead and open those up if you want to. Um, yeah, so, uh, uh, waiter, waiter, can I get some service over here? Hi, Dude. we... Dude. Oh, <laughs> very hip. Cool, I like that, yeah. Do you, uh, do you need to buy the ticks soon? Oh my gosh, the movies, yeah. Can you do that for me real quick while I order the food? Thanks so much, sweetheart. Um, yeah, we're gonna get two hot protein plates, if that's okay. Oh, sick. I like them, they make me feel young again. <laughs> Okay, yeah, and uh, we're going to go ahead and get the, uh, the apricot kale, and we're going to get the, the Stuffing. Sweet no sweet potatoes. Stuffing. Oh, wow. <laughs> Very specific. Okay. Um, so no sweet potato. What, what's this? Uh, it's uh, catching a turtle. <laughs> you just serve an animal catching another animal? Wow, this place is so hip, sweetie. <laughs> Okay, well, uh, let's, just, let's go ahead and move on. Let's go to the dessert aisle. Uh, what do you have here for desserts? Yeah, I'm afraid I have a presentation at the beginning of class, or, or else I, I probably would. Pumpkin pie? <laughs> pumpkin he, pie. We like some pumpkin pie, but no mashed potatoes. Make sure there are no sweet potatoes. You have a presentation. Aren't you on the clock working here a good time? Wow. You're in the Herald. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's my improv team, but uh, you recognize me? Yes, but... Not nearly as much as I... You're gonna finish, finish that sentence? But not as much as Inception did. Honey, this guy's freaking me out. I think we should go somewhere else. Yeah, it's pretty windy down here too. I know. And super cold. Right, close did it. it make oh! you, did it make you think? Yeah, it made me think how cold I am. You guys gotta close your doors. Sweetie, let's get out of here. Where, where should we go instead? Uh. Take your time. <laughs> you can go to the BYU duck pond, my good dude. <laughs> now he's back to cool guy. I think I'm going to stay. Wait, now I'm confused. Why not? Yeah, why not? Hey, if you talk to that Brittany girl by, the cha by, by a chance, tell her I love her. If and see. <laughs> well done. That's good. Thank you all so much. Wonderful. Okay, um, thank you so much. Let's give it up. Awesome job. Fantastic. Okay, we need um, we need one more audience volunteer. Another audience volunteer. Go ahead and uh, just pick somebody for us. Feel free to point. 
Let's have a lady this time. Let's have a lady do a scene with us. Uh, single lady right here, why don't you have to come up from here? Let's give it up for her. Okay. Okay, what's your name? Uh, Yanin. Yanin? Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, what we're going to do, if you go to our theater, we, we do long form improv, which is different from comedy sports or quick wits or laugh out loud, where they do kind of whose lines any style games. What we do is we take a story, a true story, and we try to apply that same funny to a new scene. We try to find the game organically. So what I need from you is I need an honest, true story. It doesn't have to be the most hilarious story you've ever experienced in your life. It just has to be interesting enough that when I ask you a question, it bubbles up to your consciousness. So what I need from you, what is the most unusual thing that's happened to you uh, at work or at school? Someone have a story that pops up? Hmm. Right here. Hold on, back up a little bit. So explain that to me again. So you were invited to lunch. Jaden and I had walked in. Jaden and I were there. Who didn't know? My coworkers. Your coworkers invited you to lunch. Decided to go to lunch. And I hear them, and I was like, really strange and invite me to this thing? Yeah. And then you said, let's play. So they all left. So you're all in the same workspace. They're like, we're going to go here, we're going to go there. And you're like, I hope they invite me. And then they just peace out. Yeah. And you're just left there alone. Okay, let's do something like that. We're gonna do is we're just gonna do some scene work, and you just fill in the best you can. Okay. <laughs> oh my gosh, Cindy, have you heard of that place called Good Time? No, tell me more. Oh my gosh, they've got like uh, pomegranate uh, kale, and they've got like uh, sweet roasted pickle bottoms, Ooh. and they've got like uh, four side pig chops. Uh, it's gonna be so. Do you want to go for lunch? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, man, I, I could really split the bill three ways, but. I guess the two of us are going to have to do. Yeah, I guess. Is there anyone else who want to come with? I can't think of anybody else who'd want to come. Hmm, what about that guy from your one class? Oh, yeah, what about him? Philip? Yeah. I think ugh, he's sick today. Oh, darn. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, I guess let's head out. Yeah, let's go. Okay, fantastic. <laughs> hey, Brady, what's up? Hey, Zach. Uh, you need? Hey. See you later. Okay, see you, man. <laughs> we cut to the restaurant. Yeah, this place is the best. I mean, uh, yeah, let's see. Um, What's your favorite? Oh, my gosh. I love uh, I love the pickled tri-tip. Um, mm. And I love the glazed peanut butter on the turtle catching a dove. Wow, that's, like, really interesting. Is it, like, from, like, Africa or something? It's weird that you would jump to that, but uh, <laughs> it is. Ooh, I thought so. But Brady, what are, you, what are you doing here? Hey. Hey, guy, I didn't know you would be here. <laughs> do you I, like to come here too? I do now. Oh. <laughs> well, excuse us, we're about to order the protein plate. It's so expensive, I wish we could I split know. it three ways. Oh. <laughs> yeah, 40 bucks for two people, a little bit much. That's like kind of pricey. Yeah. Oh, so the birthday money for my grandmother. Brady, you have something to say? <laughs> See you later. <laughs> and see. Thank you so much, Janine. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you all so much. Have you had a fun time with us today? Yeah. Have you learned something? Okay, thank you so much for having us. We just have a couple of quick plugs, uh, and then we'll do one more thing with you guys. And I think we'll do a Q&A after if anyone has any questions. Um, so, like we said, we just opened up a brand new theater on 9th East. It's right next to Vasa Fitness on the way up to uh, the law school side of the Lida campus. Uh, we keep our, our tickets super cheap. It's five bucks online, so it's really good for, for students. Um, what we want to do, our mission is to create, make Provo the next, next big uh, comedy hub, and we want to become really the world's first family-friendly or clean comedy hub, where people come here specifically to be trained how to be a uh, comedian in sketch, improv, stand-up, but with all ages in mind. Um, and so if that's something that, that, that you're interested in, we offer classes, we're a school, and so we offer, I, I always say everyone should take a one-on-one -on -one course. Even if you don't want to be a comedian, take a one-on-one -on -one course. It'll help you, it'll help you in your social life, help you in your business life. It'll just help you how to think, how am I, am I being a yes butt head? Am I, am I being a contrarian? Or am I validating people and I'm making them bigger? So I hope you can come. Uh, what we're gonna do now, and this is kind of a shot in the dark, but 
statistically, there has to be at least one person in this room, since we live in Utah, that has learned how to play piano. Raise your hand if you know how to play piano or know basic chords. Who knows basic chords? Right here. Um, who's the most comfortable? If I were to give you a four chord progression, which one of you would be most comfortable? Right here. Come on up. Okay, thanks so much. What we're going to do for you is we're going to show you just a little bit of taste of what we do. Now, we do long form. We do sort of this audience interaction. But our favorite thing to do in the whole world is uh, an improvised musical. We're just going to show you a taste of what, uh, what happens when we do. We're going to do an improvised duet based off of a song title from one of you. So this is a really this is a good chord progression right here. If you just want to play however you want and just wh whatever, you, I trust you. Okay, let's, let's hear it out. So what we need from you is we need a, um, we just need a suggestion of a song title that has never existed, and we're going to make it up on the spot. Something, uh, something a little quippier would be nice. Hmm? What's that? Bathtub baby. Okay, great. Whenever you're ready, take it away. We're going to just have you listen to the chord progression once. Uh, five, six, seven, eight. Dear wife, you've disobeyed my commands. We live in medieval times. Listen to me, I'm a man. You know that we as a family bathe once a month. I go first, then you, then the rest of the kids. Then we throw the baby out with the tub. Bath time, baby. No ifs, ands, or maybes. Bath time, baby, right now. Dear, keep going, dear wife, you've disobeyed all my commands you listen to me here because i'm a man you know that we bathe once a month so it's time we throw out the baby with the tub bath time baby everybody bath time baby yeah bath time baby Bad time, babe. Thank you all so much. I hope you come see us. You've been a wonderful audience. And thank you. That was fantastic. You should play for us. Seriously.